Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be, or good evening or good night. This is Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, a place to create, share and play. Hello, hello, hello. All right, now here I'm just showing you a whole heap of little tearaways that I did. And I was just doing a little session and I thought, you know what? I'm going to turn the camera on and share it with you all. These are not new. Loads of people do these. Most, let's face it, most of what we all do in our junk journals has been inspired by lots of other things that we've seen. However, I do remember when I first saw this, I first saw this on Pam at the Paper Outpost on her channel. And I don't know about you, but I make these little tearaways. The idea is the little strips, uh, little strips that you can tear off. So you know how sometimes you need to give someone a phone number or you want to make a little note and share it with someone. That's what this is for. So you put these into your journals or your notebooks. However, I actually put these, oh, isn't this cute? I love stamping on calico. So they're just little calico strips that I've torn up and then I'm just stamping on them. And now I'm jumping around everywhere as I always do. Sorry, everybody. Uh, now, what was I saying? Look, I um, can't remember. Must have been a lie. That's what my mum used to say. So, yeah, I just did all these little random stamping and some of it just a light touch, you know, different which ways. I didn't want it to, you know, look like anything in particular. I just wanted a bit of patterning on one side of that calico. Uh, however, yeah, using these... Genuinely, if I even just get a regular notebook to put in my handbag, I will make one of these and put it in the back of my normal notebook so that I get to use it. Like, that's one of the things I'm learning to do with junk journals. If I've just bought a little normal notebook, I'm just, you know, dolling it up for myself and making it a bit more fun, putting cute little pockets in it, putting cute little art pages and all of that. I quite like bullet journaling. And uh, I love that there's a name for that now. The main thing I use it for is I've always coded my notes so that I know what I've got to do and what's still to go and so forth. I've always doodled in my notebooks and I've always done page numbers for them. Hmm, there's a point. Maybe I should put page numbers, cute little page numbers on one of my next journals and actually, you know, make it like a handcrafted, junky journal, bookmaking kind of bullet journal-y kind of style with a little code in the front kind of thing. Hmm, there's a thought. All right, all right. Sorry, I haven't explained <laughs> of what I'm doing. On this little lot of tearaways, I decided I'd add some little fabric strips in it too. On one of them, I added some lace into it. So cute. I mean, completely impractical, but there has to be an impractical element, you know, something that's just fun and textural and, you know, cute to look at. That's my theory. So there's a few different ways to do these. I do find this method generally the easiest. So gluing down your strips on the back, putting something over the front to glue them down over the front. And I loved the idea of just adding some little lace to pop up behind this. And that's really all I need to do because... This is kind of in my colours, so it's probably, or um, you know, practically a complete finished piece I can put into a journal. However, you can leave these really nice and simple. So you could even just do plain coloured strips and you could colour them after to match a colour of a journal or you could stamp them after, like you could put a lovely stamp right across all your tearaways, just a faded stamp. And then it could be in the theme of your journal. As you know, I try and do themes, but I'm not really very good at doing themes. <laughs> I always get distracted by shiny things and do something completely different. And so it ends up as yet another eclectic journal. Okay, now this is funny. This was the bit I went, oh, I'll show them how to do a really easy, quick one that's even super fast and super easy. And I fussed and faffed so much with this one and all the pieces kept wiggling around and it wasn't so easy. But I don't know, normally it does seem a lot quicker. What I was trying to show you here is that you can also simply staple it. So I think it was a bit harder because I did the fold over. If you actually do it without the fold over, then you can just staple it as you go across. And 
sometimes that's really cool. You can just have a really simple rustic look. You don't even need to use glue. It doesn't need to dry. It can go straight into a journal. And then you can just, you know, cover those staples if you don't like them or leave them out for the rustic look. On this one, I decided I just wanted a little bit of something, something in the corner. So that was a corner that was torn off one of the pieces of calico and a little teeny bit of lace there. So yeah, I just gave that a go. And this is over there, that little music bit. See there on the right? <laughs> that was just the torn, like the cut edge of a piece that I'd covered with some uh, tea bag paper and a little bit of music page and so forth. And so that was the edge trimmed and I just liked it. So I kept it. Now this one I also did as you can have them on a full back. Now that means that you could put them on a pocket without interfering with what you're popping in the pocket or on a page and you could decorate that little back piece that you're putting on. There's lots of different things, you know, that you could do with that. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. I mean, it's not hugely different, but it was different enough to be another way, right? And I was saying here that you could staple underneath that and then, see, cover it over. So just another little method and oh, isn't that cute i love all the grunginess on that tea bag so fun i wish i could remember where i first saw that tip of using tea bags in your work um hmm i cannot for the life of me remember but gee i love it it's such a great way to get some sort of filter tissue paper like some people use coffee filter papers which is really cool so goodness so many creative ideas and look all i'm showing you here is that you can just sit them on a book page i know it's super fast but if you slow it down you'll be able to see each of the little designs if you so desire and heaps of you have come into heaps of uh, like the new subscribers and things you've come across into our group playing with paper and glue so now we can chat even more I love that so you know I mean it's Lynn's group playing with paper and glue obviously hence the name I just help her out a bit and uh, but oh it's so nice to have you all there and do go and check out her channel, Playing With Paper and Glue, and go and check out Rach at Rach and Bella. She's got an awesome collaboration if you're looking for ideas for Christmas with so many designers, big and small. So yeah, go and have a look at her collaboration and her channel too. She's so creative, so pretty. And of course, Kylie at Kylie's Card Craft, if you want another Aussie maker, I never see a video of Kylie's where I don't learn something. She is phenomenal and her journaling is amazing. Now here I'm showing you that you can just finish them off too if you want to add a little something. You can put a little label at the top or you could put a little word to, you know, just make them feel like there's something. I don't know what making dainty means <laughs> for your tearaways, but it could be something more relevant. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon. I'd love it if you could leave me a comment below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, keep creating. Enjoy.